Jenkins here with another edition of The Scoop for Mason County Press, brought to you by West Shore Bank, and I am joined with Eric Smith, Director of the Mason County District Library of Ludington and Scottville. How are you? Doing all right. Good, good. So we are here to talk about how the library has been kind of moving along with the restrictions. So let's first talk about the newest thing. You, you guys now are letting people in to use the internet and the computers. Yeah, All right. uh, we've been um, worried that lives are getting more complicated. They're not getting easier. Oh, and as some right. of the things expire that, um, that people have been accustomed to for the last couple of months, we've noticed a very real need for people to have access to computers and internet, faxes, photocopies, those kinds of things. Okay. To make sure that they have those things, we thought very, very hard about how to offer them in a safe way. Okay. Our solution has been to keep the library closed for browsing, but we have the, the, um, the hard surfaces, like the hard floor and hard uh, tables and everything open, and, and two computers for public use. They work just like the computers that you're used to using here. Um, sign on for half an hour, and then at that point, the, the session expires. Okay. Um, but they print. And we can do photocopies, we can do faxes, you can email, scan documents, all of those things, because it is it is a very challenging time yeah. for, for people. And those needs uh, are very real. Especially, I know, like, people who had been filing for unemployment, too. Yeah. There's a lot of things that they need to have mm -hmm. access to to get back to them so they get their money. So I did, yeah, I wasn't aware that you guys were doing, like, the faxing and the photocopying, too. That's yeah, awesome. that's something that we started with curbside um, uh, pick up a while back okay. where we we started just with curbside and we quickly realized that we could offer these additional services safely okay so we we extended what we were what we were offering to bring those objects I mean because it's getting stuff out of people's cars and taking it in and and faxing it but we've done really important documents since then you know life hasn't slowed down for people and it hasn't gotten sure. simpler now, are you doing this in Scottville also? Absolutely. Okay. All the services that we offer are in both both locations. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the curbs, curbside service and how that works. So mm -hmm. when somebody is like, oh, I want to check out a library book, take me from there. Okay. <laughs> if you're interested in checking out a library book, there's a couple of different options. If you're computer handy or you can go online, go to our catalog and make the request that way. Um, once that happens, then generally speaking, that later that day or the next day, one of our staff people will get the list of all the books that people have requested. They'll walk around through the stacks and they'll find those books. Once they do that, they check them in. You get a text or a call, depending on your um, choice on your library card, and you're able to come down to the library between nine and three except for on Wednesdays, and we go 9 till 6, and let us know that you're here, either by calling us or texting to our Gabby number. Let us know what lot you're in, and we bring it out to you. Contactless, you roll down your window, we drop it in, say hi, and then you're on your way. You can keep, keep moving. It's handy. It is. If you're used to using Mel, you can do the same thing with Mel Lending now, so you can go online to mel.org make requests that way and we do the same situation when it arrives we give you a notification and you come down and let us know you're here and we drop it in your car so all of those books that you're um, used to getting through the interlibrary loan system they're all available again as of this week that's cool okay summer reading program summer reading program is a little different this okay. year but it is it is uh, we started off the summer by getting the bags together um, I think if you look on our Facebook, you'll see a really fun video of all of us in full PPE putting the bags together and, and uh, putting them on the fence at the library in, in Ludington and on the clothesline in the library in Scottville for people to come by, grab those bags with all of the things that they would need in order to participate in our program, and then take them home and work on them from home. We still have, um, there's an online portion of that, there's an, uh, a physical reading portion. So one thing that was different when we started this was we started before the library was open for curbside. 
So that meant that those kids that were trying to start their summer reading program had limited access okay. to books. We solved that problem by ordering thousands and thousands of paperbacks from Scholastic at extremely discounted prices and putting those in those bags. So every kid that's joined our summer reading program has, was able to get um, Scholastic paperbacks that matched their reading level. Right. And so there's lots and lots of books out there for kids uh, to try to combat the summer slide, increase literacy, and you know create a culture of literacy throughout our community. Now, when when you guys first introduced it, I thought you were just putting them out like one time, but you've been putting bags out weekly. Yes, each week there's been a bag and it has a craft kit, more books to take, and then if you need the summer reading packet still, you can still get okay. them that way. And these are books they get to keep. They get to keep those That's books. Awesome. Yep. That's awesome. We got some really good ones for the early reader yeah. that Lauren has really liked, so that's been really cool. <laughs> yeah. So besides Mel and the website, what are some other virtual programs, items that people can kind of mm -hmm. utilize while you're still basically on lockdown? Yeah, well, um, since the beginning, we've been doing virtual preschool story time with Miss Sue. She records them once a week for four days. So every day throughout, there is still story time mm -hmm. with Miss Sue. And those are a virtual version of, this, of the story time that you're used to. So if you're bringing your kids on a regular basis, you know the routine and Miss Sue still does it with the, the days of the week and the, and the um, hokey pokey and all of that still. So that's still going on. There are still two um, virtual uh, kids programs each week okay. that are um, some of the outside performers that we've been used to getting okay. are still doing a zoom version of their performance so we're still seeing uh, really cool stuff for example we just had a really cool one on um, our amazing universe and the the, the, the um, speaker speaker was talking about the, the new dwarf planet that they just discovered. oh yeah and before that, we had a really excellent performance from Paleo Joe, who talks about uh, dinosaurs mm -hmm. and, and paleontology. That's so those cool. are still really um, good ways to check in with performers that we mm -hmm. normally are used to having in person, but this time around, they're, they're here at virtually. Okay. And in addition, um, our young adult librarian is still doing young adult programming for kids 12 and up. Okay. And there's also bingo. There is bingo. Yeah, bingo has been a lot of fun. Um, Miss Katie is doing bingo once a week, and that's a that's a an opportunity to to watch um, watch a virtual bingo session and win some prizes. That's cool. So if they win a prize, well, how do they get it? If you win a prize, you just come down and let us know you're here, and we deliver it out curbside. Cool. Awesome. Because you're making it quite easy for people to you know get everything that they need. But I'm sure that there is still that, especially for you guys, that whole piece of, you haven't seen people really yeah. until this week since March. Yeah. And that's got to be hard. So, like, can you tell us just a little bit about kind of what you guys have been doing <laughs> internally? I mean, have there been sure. any projects that you've been wanting to work on that you've gotten done or anything like that? There's always things that we have in the background going on. Um, we've turned a lot of our time into uh, virtual presentations. We've started doing things like um, uh, virtual book talks. So again, if you check our Facebook page and our website, you can see where our librarians have taken one of their favorite books and talked about it a little bit with um, with Mr. Thomas, who's who's heading up that project okay. so it's an opportunity for us to really be the experts on literacy and the experts on books that sometimes when we see people all the time um, there's a lot going on in the building during the day right. and so it becomes difficult for us to really be that expert sometimes sure. yeah I never um, really, even really thought about that you guys don't have a lot of time to actually probably talk about books talk about books and that's what all of us do when we're here in the back rooms and when we're around that's all of our <laughs> our interests right you know? yeah um, it's an extremely geeky group of people and no. it's a great it's a great group to be around because there's always somebody 
talking about something really fascinating. And we're trying to turn that outward and make sure that the, that the community sees all of our really, really geeky, nerdy interests. Well, it would be something cool to continue to do if you guys have time. Absolutely. When everything kind of opens back up. And speaking of that, what does it look like for you guys down the road? Like when school goes yeah. back into session and... I know there's a lot of kids who utilize the mm -hmm. library after school and for resources and that kind of thing. How are you guys preparing for that? Well, it takes a lot of groundwork to be laid and getting to this point where we were open for even limited public um, interaction has taken a lot of groundwork. So now we're through this goalpost and we're working on the next goalpost. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. I figured you um, didn't. <laughs> it, a lot of it will depend on the schools. A lot of it will depend on what this situation in the state is mm -hmm. by the time the, the schools are hopefully opening or hopefully not opening, depending on you know some kind of guidance right. from the state, um, if if there is any. And we're we're taking a very um, safe approach our our whole goal has been to make sure that our um our role in the community is to stay safe and to be a good citizen to provide the services for people um, which means that because we are trying very hard to make sure we do provide them to everybody we have a higher limit of safety than sure. other places sure. So we're being more careful than other places, but the reason for that is because we have a constitutional obligation to serve everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, and there are, you just have a lot of foot traffic through here every day. And a normal July day, a normal August day, we can have anywhere from 500 to 700 people in the building at, okay. at, you know, during the day. And so trying to prepare for that number of people has left us um, really concerned about control okay. controlled space makes sense we have um basically three things that we need to be in control of and it's masks space and time and so those are the three elements of of our space that we're trying to think about when we plan what's safe and what isn't okay Great. Well, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. So the library is open. Uh, both Are both branches the same times? Yes. Okay. Monday and Tuesday, 9 to 3. Wednesday, 9 to... Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. 9 to 3 for curbside. We're open from 11 till 3 in the building. Okay. So curbside starts at 9, goes till 3. Okay. In-person starts at 11, goes till 3. Wednesday, Except we have extended hours until 6. And closed Saturday and Sunday. We're still closed Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Yeah. And if people want to come in and use the computers, is that another thing, too, that they wait outside until it's their turn and you guys will text them or wave to them? No, the door is open. Okay. Um, you may come in. But if we have met our capacity, uh, which is four in Lettington and two in Scottville, then we will ask you to wait outside or we'll offer to run an item out to the curb okay. or do prints that way. Okay. Um, but we do have a, a pretty limited capacity based on the square footage of our sure. of our situation here. Okay, cool. For any other news, check out masoncountypress.com and our weather is always brought to you by Smith Nettie Insurance. And remember, even though the library might be closed, they're always open. <laughs>